the Quran Lee app. Subscription cheaper than Netflix, encouraging Quran reading, modern, engaging, and fun. Download it today. That's a gen, yeah. <laughs> Asalaamu Alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. As we know, the extremist Hindus are running amok in India and here is one of the clips that I would like to react to today. It was not the sword that won a place for Islam in those days in the scheme of life. Who is Muhammad, peace be upon him? Well, let me educate you. Let me inform you. Let me elucidate and enlighten you. You know what? I'm going to start off not with my words. I'm going to give you the words of Alphonse de la Martine from the 1800s. He was a prolific French writer and a statesman, might I add. And seen as what's going on in France at the moment, I think it's only fitting. He said, If greatness of purpose, smallness of means and astounding results were the three measures of human genius, then who can dare to compare any man of modern history to Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was a philosopher, an orator, an apostle, a legislator, a warrior, a conqueror of ideas and restorer of rational dogma. Now I present three independent 7th century non-Muslim writers who verify the existence and presence of Muhammad peace be upon him in Arabia. I start off number one with the Nestorian Chronicle. Number two, the Doctrina Jacobi Nupa Baptizati. And number three, Bishop Sabius of the House of Bagratunis. Might I add, having writings that can be dated back to the time of the individual is not something that we can do of Moses, of Jesus, and the likes of Socrates. But we can for Muhammad peace be upon him. And Imam Suyuti in his Khasais al-Kubra enumerates a thousand two hundred miracles of this individual that you're asking who is he? In fact there are 40 to 60 thousand distinct sayings of the Prophet that have been compiled in at least 50 different collections detailing intricate information like the amount of grey hairs he had on his beard. It was 14 in case you're curious. To his mannerisms, like the direction in which he combed his hair. In fact, there's an entire field that has been dedicated to verifying and preserving his sayings, which are called hadith, that cannot be said for any other individual. In fact, there are approximately 20,000 men and women who are narrators in these chains of transmission as we call them. And their reliability is scrutinized from where they lived, where they traveled, who they met, who their teachers were, and if they lied and had a good memory or not. In fact, masters of hadith like Dara Kutni Rahimahullah says that if all 20,000 of these narrators stood in front of me, I could tell you their name, their father's name, their tribe, and if they were reliable or not. His name at this moment in time is the number one choice for baby boys that are born. And you've got non-Muslims like Michael H. Hart who call him the number one most influential people of history. And if that's not stuff you're willing to accept, let me give you a quote from somebody you're familiar with. Yes, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, or like some people call him Gandhi. And he says in his book Jail Experiences Volume 9, It was not the sword that won a place for Islam in those days in the scheme of life. It was the rigid simplicity, the utter self-effacement of the Prophet, the scrupulous regard for pledges, 
his intense devotion to his friends and followers, his intrepidity, his fearlessness, his absolute trust in God and in his own mission. You ask me who Muhammad is? I have answered your question and I ask you, find me another individual like him in human history and I put my life on it that you will not be able to. And I end by saying peace and blessings of Allah be upon Muhammad. Yes, the final messenger of God to mankind. I invite you to read the Quran and the life of the Prophet peace be upon him. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.